Good morning and welcome to worship for Sunday, May the 9th, 2021 from Trinity United Church in Winnipeg. We are grateful that you have made your way here, whether you're on the telephone or on a device, however you connect to this place from wherever you are, we are grateful you are here. As we begin our worship today, there are a couple things to talk about. You may often have wondered who is doing that camera work? How does that video get put up on YouTube? Who is it that puts this all together? Well, you too can learn how to do that. We're looking for folks who want to learn about the camera, about uh, editing the video and about uploading. And it sounds very complicated, but I can assure you, if I can learn this, you can learn this. So uh, if you'd like to do that, then please be in touch. We'd be good to have a couple people that we have as backup and that's a good thing. We're also looking for a new payroll person. Um, this is a person who would uh, have access to the internet a couple times a month. Everything is done on the internet now. And just inputting some figures and making sure that our staff gets paid through our national payroll service. So if you'd like some more information or think that you have some gifts and talents or would like to learn this, then please be in touch with Gerda or myself or the office and we'll be happy to share the information that you need. This week on May 5th, we marked um, Red Dress Day by hanging items, uh, red items around the church in our trees. And this is to mark the fact that there are thousands of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls who, who are still unsolved, who it's still a, a terrible, horrible situation. And so as we do so, we acknowledge that the land on which we live, work, and play, and worship is Treaty 1 land in the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Cree, Oji Cree, and Dakota people and in the heart of the Métis Nation. We acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture as we live in peace. We pray for justice and reconciliation in our work together. And so we light the candle. This candle lights our affirming candle. It reminds us that we are all welcome. It doesn't matter who we are, what we wear, how much money in our bank account, how connected we are. It matters that we want to follow Jesus. It matters that we want to figure out how to be God's people in the world. And this light signifies that. So we'll call ourselves to worship with more voices 122. Singing hallelujah, singing hallelujah. 
God, we come today to this worship. We come as we are, knowing that you love us, you accept us, you hold open your arms to welcome us. Whether we're feeling whole or broken, whether we're feeling tormented or calm, whether we want to sing and dance or sit in the corner and cry, you welcome us. Hold out your arms, reach out and say, you belong, here in this place, here as one of my children. Knowing this, we breathe as deeply as we can, and we come to worship. Amen. This week at the board meeting, we were speaking about uh, all of the work that we were doing, and. Uh, thinking about this service that was coming up for Christian family service. And I asked uh, some members of the board if they wanted to uh, submit what they believe and what they feel the Christian family of Trinity uh, is to them. So we hear from our first speaker is Barb Posty, and she is co-chair of the board. The people of Trinity United Church are very precious to me because they are my brothers and sisters in our life and love with Christ. We share our faith together, support each other, care for each other, encourage each other to follow his teachings. As Micah says in 6.8, it's good to walk humbly with God. My heart is happy that we walk together. Amen. The reading is done by Nancy DeLong. Scripture is our song for the journey, the living word passed on from generation to generation to guide and inspire. I am reading from the Revised Standard Version, Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. This is after Simon, who is called Peter, has gone to Cornelius in Caesarea. Cornelius invites Peter to preach all he has been commanded by the Lord. This is after Peter has spoken about Jesus' death and resurrection. While Peter was still saying this, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone forbid water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some time. May God bless to our understanding this reading from Holy Scripture. Although this short little passage seems to be taken out of context, and you can go back and read the earlier verses, the ones that Nancy referred to, it packs a very, another very powerful message for our church today. It feels like a turning point for the early church because before this passage, they had thought that only they belonged to the Christian church. But it also reminds us that we are not the first ones to address the changing world all around us. Our changing world might be very different than theirs but it's changing nevertheless. As we look to these five little verses, we see images and hear all about miraculous moments that invite us to look around, to identify times that reflect this change, and think deeply about how we share God's love. Today, we have a few different themes for worship. They're all mixed in together. We have Christian Family Sunday, which in the secular world is Mother's Day. We have the end of Mental Health Week. We have the season of Easter. 
and likely a couple more that I haven't mentioned or remembered. As the board met last week and diligently, prayerfully went about their work, I was struck how Terry, that one of the other co-chairs of the board, connected the personal to the community. At the last board meeting, I could really feel the love, and I'm sure the other board members did too. I get support and encouragement from our congregation. How could we not be supportive to such a good minister as Elizabeth? Perhaps it is the individual minister that encourages support from their congregation. We at Trinity have always been blessed by fantastic ministers, partly because our congregation seeks only the best for us. Likewise, We've always had a great music team and support staff. I feel the love of God in our church. It is everywhere. On another note, Tom and Elizabeth just finished swapping over our car tires for the Action Auction, and they even labeled the tires and armor all to the exterior of them. Most service stations don't do either for you. Thank you very much. So I know that Terry mentions me in that particularly, but he could have mentioned anyone, anyone at all, because this, is the ki this kind of caring is not exclusive to one person or family. It's part of who we are as the Christian family. All this week there have been different people who have offered their thoughts on the United Church website about dealing with mental health issues. And I was struck by one of them in particular. She it was written by Katrina Manassas. And her, she wonders where her faith and her faith life and her faith community takes its place in her suffering as she deals with mental health issues. She writes, Faith helps me in that I take comfort in certain faith-related ideas and spiritual practices. Some of the ideas are biblical. One of my favorite pa favorites is a passage in Matthew where Jesus describes God caring enough to feed the birds even though they can't plant or reap or farm and caring for us even more. That is a great antidote to worry. Beyond the Bible, there, are there is the faith-based poem, Footprints, which describes how even when we feel distant from God, God is carrying us. There's also the idea that rather than trying to predict what will come, we can trust that with God's help, we will handle what will come, whatever the outcome. In these thoughts, she writes, faith provides hope even in very hard and unpredictable times. She goes on to talk about how spiritual practices that feed her soul and describes how individuals in her faith community affect her well-being. I think that this writing struck me and touched my heart because it felt so familiar and here it's echoed in Susan's words. My Christian family at Trinity is comprised of people who care about me. With them, I can get things done. Meeting with the board gives me structure and a purpose in my life in these trying times. Some family members are people I say hi to. Others are people that I could call in the middle of the night if something was wrong. Susan is one of the uh, past co-chairs of the board and still sits on the executive and the board. As we think about who we are connected with in our Christian family, and as we reflect on which spiritual practices feed our soul, as we are grateful for the community that accepts us as we are and welcomes who we become, it demonstrates, in big and small ways, God's love shared. This small passage 
very small, five little verses, reminds us of the power of inclusive community, ensuring that everyone belongs, that everyone is loved and has a place and a space to be who and whose they are. Whether it's the first Christian group that gathered or our group that gathers today, we know, we know that God's Spirit inspires and guides us, enables us to share God's love, to be God's love, to be a Christian family in the best way we can. Amen. We'll sing together more voices, 136. And I'll invite you to pay attention to the words and phrases that is in this hymn because it speaks to the variety and diversity of folks that gather as our Christian community. When hands reach out and fingers trace the beauty of a loved one's face, we thank you, God, that love relies on gifts of grace not seen with eyes. When fingers smell and signs express our prayer and praise and thankfulness, we thank you, God, that hands can sing. You bless the silent songs we bring. When broken bodies will not mend, we thank you, God, for Christ a friend. In him our healing can begin. He welcomes all the wounded in. And when the ways we a gift and never earned. Your spirit guides us different ways to serve you well and offer praise. When all are joined as one will be, your able strong community, your able strong your able, strong community. As we get to this slide every week, I often say some things, but I'm going to invite you to hear the words of Debbie Spindler, a member at large on the board. What does my Christian family at Trinity mean to me? It means, especially in this tragic time of isolation and being apart, that people care enough to devote their time and energy to continue weekly services. Whether you conduct the service, produce music, operate the camera or sound equipment, work the PowerPoint, read scripture, recite a prayer, or whatever you do to contribute, this hasn't been easy. We've all had to learn new technology, and it takes a lot of commitment. But it gives a sense of normalcy to life and so much spiritual and mental support. Elizabeth and others who have done this in your absence, your weekly moments from Trinity are such a blessing. Effort is made to keep the office functioning and to handle all the financial concerns, keep committees meeting, collect food for the community, and practice outreach in so many ways, just as we would have in normal times. A book study, the big question, Bible studies, a walking group, and so many other, other things have continued and been created so we can still connect in so many new and different ways. To me, this sense of community has been a lifeline. Surely this is faith in action. Surely this is faith in action, and we do give thanks and are grateful 
for every gift given, everything that is contributed to the mission and the ministry at Trinity, and we say thank you. Before we move into the prayers uh, now that are created and read by Irma, I, we were offered um, in, to mark mental health uh, we, this video, and this is a video that was created um, by the Ottawa Soul Space uh, group, and as I was watching it, I thought, hmm, I think I recognize some of those people. And when I was an intern many years ago, um, I definitely was part of that as part of my student placement in Ottawa, and was part of um, uh, the group that did some of these things, although now, of course, we didn't have all the PPE and everything else that they are using now. But I invite you to watch and listen and experience this video. Oh, 
So as we gather for our prayers today, I invite you to think about the people in your life that you are concerned about. The ones that have a space in your heart that you want to celebrate with, or you're worried about, or you're concerned about, or you're wondering about. I want you to hold those people, maybe some situations in our community close by, in another country, around the world. Hold all of that in your heart as we hear Irma's words as we pray together. Loving God, we are grateful for the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the gift of water and baptism given freely to believers so long ago and still given freely to us today. May we all feel your presence and the gift of the Holy Spirit in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. We hold in our hearts and pray for all those in our community of faith who have lost loved ones, all who are sick and all who need your healing touch as we are physically separated from each other. We lift up all mothers today in gratitude and ask you to bless them in the tireless work that they do every day especially now as they are challenged to keep their children safe during this pandemic. We pray for mothers who have lost a child, that you will provide comfort to them on this Mother's Day and always. As you continue to open our eyes to the inequalities and injustices faced in our cities and communities and around the world, guide us in our understanding. Help us to know when we are called to action, when to speak out, and when to listen. In the words of St. Francis of Assisi, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. We continue in prayer in the words that Jesus taught us as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn today is uh, from Voices United 166, and I uh, again invite you to sing along and to hear those words as they, as they um, reflect the hope that we believe in as God is by our side. springs from 
Rains from their tomb And scatters the night with their song Joy comes with their tongue Elizabeth's words at the end of this service speak to what it is to be a Christian family at Trinity for me. Go out and be God's people. In worship, in everyday life within the church, I feel connected to Trinity Christian family as they role model how to be God's family. It is no simple matter. It is a matter of having faith, love, and hope. This is what I receive and what I emulate to give. Thank you to Trinity Christian Family. These five people have spoken words that ring true, perhaps for you too. They reflect uh, part of our community of faith, this Christian family. I'm sure you too have other words that you might use, and we welcome to hear from them. But as we listen today and think about and ponder and reflect on and think deeply about all of these things that were in worship today, whether that's Christian family service, whether that's mental health week, whether that's how we are people of God, how can we be that inclusive, amazingly inclusive and welcoming community of faith. We do need God's spirit to help us. We do need God to guide us. We do need to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and the early Christian community. We do need to know that we are beloved children of God and that we can go into the world and be brave and share God's love everywhere. And now may the grace of God and the love of Jesus and the power of that amazing spirit that is with each and every one of us continue to walk with us always.